Well, God bless you. Welcome to the Wonderful Words of Life radio program. We're going to be in Mark chapter 9 in this session, and we're going to be talking about us coming into alignment with the Holy Spirit. Of course, when we say coming into alignment with the Holy Spirit, we're also talking about coming into alignment with the Lord Jesus. Amen. Coming into alignment, amen, with the Holy Spirit in these last days. There are certain things that we have to acknowledge, certain things that we have to do, have resident in our heart to be in alignment for the Spirit of God to be poured out. And God's Spirit is being poured out. Amen. We just want to get under the spout where the Spirit of God is being poured out, the water of God. Amen. Father, we bless you. We thank you today. We thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Now, Lord, uh, speak to us through your word today. Give us revelation. Open up our hearts and minds. And Father, we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. All right. We're going to start with the transfiguration. We're in Mark chapter 9, and we'll read uh, beginning in verse 1. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And, of course, uh, that was true. And after six days, Jesus took them with him, Peter, James, and John, and leads them up into a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. Well, I guess you and I would be too, wouldn't we? And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore save Jesus only with themselves. Isn't it interesting how that when God speaks in this manner, there is always a suddenly, praise God. Are you in a situation today where you need a sudden move of God? You need a sudden hearing or a voice from heaven to show you what to do and how to do it. Do you need a suddenly for the Holy Spirit to show up in grace and in power? Praise God. Well, it's all centered around the word of God. It's all centered around the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, I don't know about you, but I certainly want to get myself to an, into alignment to where I can hear what the God is saying to me, what the voice of the Holy Spirit is saying to me. Amen. Praise God. And verse 9 says, And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. Now, how do you explain what just happened? How do you explain it? Well, <laughs> There's only one way you can. That Jesus has just revealed to Peter, James, and John uh, who, just exactly who he is. And you think, well, if God moved in such a supernatural, spectacular way uh, with his disciples, then how is it, amen, that when Jesus was arrested, they all fled and deserted the Lord? Well, that's a good question, but. We have to understand that, that at that time, none of the disciples were truly born again. They were not born again. Now, they were saved by faith. Their names were written in heaven, but they were not born again. They did not have the life and the nature of God on the inside of them. So uh, we can't accuse them. We can't criticize them, especially in the, light, uh, in the light of the fact that we do have the Spirit of God on the inside of us. We do have Him. We have His Word. Uh, they, these disciples didn't have the New Testament. We have the New Testament, but yet we still stumble around in unbelief. Amen. And so uh, who is going to receive <laughs> the greater condemnation? Amen. Praise God. Let's just be doers of the word and let's just be prayed up and filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So Jesus reveals to these Peter, James, and John, that he is the infinite God man. He's the Lord of glory. He's the only begotten son of God. Amen. And he's in a body. 
the infinite God man, all God, but yet in a human body. Praise God. That is not subject to sin. It was not until the cross that Jesus was made to be sin. All of our sin was laid upon him at the cross. Amen. And he bare it for us. Now, verse 10, reading down through verse 13, and they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one another, what the rising from the dead should mean. See, they, they did not know. This is something new. This has never happened before. You know, we look at the resurrection we've heard about and been taught and, and, and maybe even preached the resurrection so many times yourself. It's nothing new. But I'm telling you that uh, these men had no idea what Jesus was talking about. But now after he ra was raised from the dead, they understood fully and completely. Amen. And aren't you glad? Because if they hadn't, we would not have the New Testament today. Praise God. Amen. Verse 11, and they asked him, saying, why say the scribes that Elias must first come? And he answered and told them, Elias verily comes first and restores all things. And how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. But I say unto you that Elias indeed has come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed as it is written of him. Jesus, of course, speaking of John the Baptist. Amen. So the first thing that we need to have resident on the in, on the inside of us and the first thing that we need to acknowledge is the fact that we need to acknowledge Jesus for who he is. Amen. He is the infinite God man. He is the Lord of glory. He is the only begotten son of God. He is a God manifest in the flesh, the second person of the Godhead, the one that stood with God in the very beginning. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, for all things were made by Him. And there was not anything made that was not made. I mean, in Him is life, praise God. We're, that's who we're talking about. We're talking about the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We acknowledge Him for who the Word says He is, and we acknowledge Him for what He's done for us. Amen. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and we have the witness of that in ourselves. Hallelujah. So we are light bearers, and we'll talk about that in a little while. So, well, the disciples, you know, they were, they were confused. They didn't understand. Amen. But remember what Peter said when Jesus asked them, who do you say I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Praise God. So we believe that, don't we? We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he is also our Savior. So let's read on. Verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he takes him, he tears him, and he foams and gnashes with his teeth and pines away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Now, why couldn't they? Well, we're going to find out here in just a minute. He answered him, he answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Now, the frustration in Jesus is due to the fact that these men have followed him and other disciples also have followed him for over three years. And he's expecting them to be farther along than what they are. And they're not. Well, wonder what Jesus thinks about us. Should we be farther along than what we are? I mean, I was worshiping yesterday and it suddenly dawned on me. I've been saved for 50 years. I should be farther along in Jesus than I am right now. Well, I'm going to make I'm going to redeem the time. I'm going to make up for it. Praise God. So they Jesus, to the, as far as they were concerned, that he expected them to come up higher. And that's exactly what he expects of us. You and I need to come up higher. 
Verse 20, and they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. If you ever come into contact with a demon and you and tell that de- and you and, and you know, and you are going to cast that demon out. This is exactly what will happen. Amen. Uh, so just be ready for it. Don't be moved by that. Don't be moved by fear. Be moved by faith. Amen. You have authority in the name of Jesus to cast out devils. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was uh, uh, after his resurrection, when he was commissioning his disciples, the very first thing that he said that you'll do a sign that, that you are followers of me. Signs that follow those who believe is that you will cast out devils. Praise God. And we're coming to that day and time where that is going to be very, very a common place within the church. Casting out devils because we see the time approach approaching. Amen. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about coming into alignment with the Holy Spirit in these last days for the last days are coming upon us. Verse 21. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came to him? And he said of a child and oftentimes it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Now we understand from what he said in verse 23. Now we understand his frustration in verse 19. So what is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, if I can, if I can. Jesus says to the man and to the disciples that should have cast this devil out. He said, anything is possible if you have faith. So now we understand the frustration of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you can believe, notice this, we have not plumbed the depth depth of this verse of Scripture. All things are possible to him that believes. Amen. So we have to ask ourselves the question today, where's our faith? Are we feeding our faith daily? Is it becoming stronger and stronger? The tests and the trials that used to fold us over now, we're walking right over them. Praise God. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Verse 24, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit and said to him, you dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried. Notice that the spirit, the demon cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And that boy, this young man was as one dead in so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? In verse 29, very simply, Jesus said to them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Now, Matthew tells us that when the disciples asked him this question, why couldn't we cast him out? Jesus said, because of your unbelief, because of your unbelief. How much in our lives does God want us, want to do for us and can't do because of our unbelief? So once again, I want to ask you, where is your faith today? Has it grown since last year? Has it grown in the last five years? Are you still, are we still waiting in the same water, amen, that we've always been waiting in? Amen. If. You can believe. That's what Jesus said. All things are possible to him that believes. Praise God. So the second thing that we need to acknowledge. Amen. If we're going to receive that which we need for the last days. We have to believe in miracles that God is a miracle worker and that miracles are working in our life. Hallelujah. And if we want to see miracles, we have to do this. 
And what do I mean? We have to have a life of prayer and fasting. Prayer is good. Praise God. Amen. Well, if we want more, we've got to add fasting to it. Prayer and fasting. Praise God. And of course, Jesus taught us to pray. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, when you pray, he expects us to pray. When you fast, he expects us to fast. Amen. Now, he leaves the choice. He doesn't tell us how to fast, but he leaves the choice up to us. We can fast from sundown to sunup. We can fast from sunup to sundown. We can fast for 24 hours. We can fast for two days. We can fast for three days. We can fast for a week, depending upon our need. But if we want power added to our prayer life, then we're going to have to fast, add fasting to our praying. Amen. Because that will enable us, praise God, and more power will be manifested through us, especially in situations like this when we're dealing with devils. All right, let's move on. Verse 30, And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying and were afraid to ask him. Now Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem now. He's going to be presenting himself to the nation, to the Jewish nation. They're going to reject him. He's going to want be arrested. He's going to be scourged and hung on, a, on the cross. Amen. He's going to become our sin substitute. You see. And he wants his disciples to know this. So what do we have to acknowledge? We have to acknowledge the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. This should be part of our daily habit. This should be part of our regular preaching and teaching. You know, when I first received Christ and was born again and, and uh, in the church that I was going to, I tell you, there's two things they taught about with, with, without a doubt. And that was the death and the resurrection of Jesus and going to heaven. Praise God. I tell you what. You talk about heaven enough, you'll get happy. Praise God. Amen. So we have to acknowledge his death and his resurrection. And they departed thence. Let me read this again. And passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. Now, why is that? Well, Jesus wanted his disciples to himself because he had some things he wanted to teach them. So he drew them away. Amen. From the populated cities brought his disciples unto himself because there's things he wanted to teach them. He wanted them to know. And one of the things he wanted them to know is the fact that he would be delivered into the hands of men when he goes to Jerusalem and that they will kill him and he will be buried. But then he will rise again the third day. They didn't understand these things, but Jesus wanted them to know these things. And I want to ask you a question today. There are things that Jesus wants you to know, things that he wants you to know. And the only way that we're going to know these things is that we're just going to have to depart, get along with him, spend time with him. Amen. Get away from our job, get away from our family, get away from our friends, get away from our activities, set aside some time to seek him. Amen. Just to spend time in his word, to pray and to wait. See, to me, this is the real value and the power of the early Pentecostals is they knew how to pray, but they also knew how to wait. Wait for what? Wait for God to speak. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray and wait. Pray and wait. There's a great value of that. Now, do we want to come into alignment with the Holy Spirit in these last days? Well, that's one of the ways in which we do it. We fast, we pray, we wait. We acknowledge who Jesus is and we acknowledge the death and the resurrection and we talk about that often. Praise God. All right, let's move on. Verse 33. And he came to Capernaum and being in the house, he asked them, what was it that you disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace, for by the way, they had disputed among themselves and who should be the greatest. 
And he sat down and called the twelve and said to them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said to them, Whosoever shall receive one such child in my name receives me. And whosoever shall receive me receives not me, but him that sent me. Amen. The same shall be last of all and servant of all. Yet we're servants of Christ. That comes first. But what about our brothers? Well, we're servants to our brothers. Amen. I don't like the spirit of one upmanship in the church today. There's no such thing. Amen. And that should not be done. Not one time. Not one time should one upmanship be made in the church. And then verse 38. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed not after us. And we forbade him because he didn't follow us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever should give you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Let me read that again. For he that is not against us is on our part. You know, your brother or your sister that goes to another denomination is not your enemy. That is your friend. Well, they don't believe like I do. Well, that's fine. They're still your brother. You still can work. You know, I remember a, a, a pastor, preacher friend of mine that passed away many years ago. You know, we were talking about this very thing. And he said, you know, uh, we can't agree on doctrine. I mean, he was denominational. I was uh, uh, of another denomination. He said, we can't agree on, on doctrine. We can't agree on, on what we believe or what the church believes. But you and I, we can always come together and agree on love. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? Do you love Jesus? Well, yes, you do. Do I love Jesus? Absolutely. Well, you, you and I may be totally different when it comes to what we, what we teach, what we've been taught, how we worship. But we can come together in love. We can work towards the, the salvation of the lost. We can do that, can't we? We love Jesus. Well, we can certainly win sinners working together. Why? Because we are to love one another. Amen. Praise God. Now, Jesus was speaking here about servants, uh, having a servant's heart. And if we're going to be in alignment with what the Holy Spirit wants to do in these last days, we're going to have to come together. We can't be separated by doctrine. We can't be separated by religious tradition. You may not believe in the baptism in the Holy Ghost like I believe it. But yet we can work together, come together and work together as one. Why? Because we love Jesus and we can serve one another. Amen. Jesus said, you know, that we're to be servants of all. We're to serve him first, but then serve one another. We can do that. We can come together for the benefit of our community, for the benefit of our, our nation and, our, and the world. We can work together. Praise God. Well, what if a missionary wants me to support him, but he doesn't believe like I do? Well, does he believe in the basic doctrines? Does he believe who Jesus is? Does he believe in the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ? And that's what he's going to go out and preach. Well, why can't we support him if he's going out to get people saved and they're truly going to get born again? We can do that. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to come together. We need to be servants one of another. Jesus would have us to be that way. And then lastly, beginning in verse 42. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. But now notice what Jesus says here. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. 
It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And, notice how many times Jesus says and in this passage. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into halt, enter halt in the light, than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Everyone, notice this, everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, wherewith will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. So that's the consummation of everything that Jesus was teaching his disciples here. But notice Jesus said, salt is good. Salt is good. And he said, for everyone shall be salted with fire. What is Jesus talking about? Well, he's talking about what he's getting ready to do in Jerusalem. He's going to be sacrificed for all of humanity. And that sacrifice is going to be good. Why? Because it's salted. So our sacrifice for the Lord, for the word of God, for the lost, whatever, you know, the Lord calls us to do. It's got to be salted. It's got to be salted with a preservative. Amen. So Jesus is saying in this passage of scripture, whatever is preventing you from being salted with salt. Amen. Cut it off. Get it. Get rid of it. Amen. That's going to spoil that which God uh, wants you to do. That's going to spoil that, which what you are doing for God. So get rid of it. Amen. Cut it off. Hallelujah. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. We are the preservative in our society. We are those that preach purification in our society. So when we stand up for Jesus, we are preserving and we are purifying as a witness to the world. Amen. That uh, Jesus is coming again. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what are the five things that we've talked about? Well, we talked about, number one, that we have to acknowledge who Jesus is, who the scripture says he is. We accept that. We know that to be true. Amen. And the second thing is that we need to acknowledge miracles, that miracles are alive and well today. Amen. And that we should be and uh, should desire to be workers of miracles. Amen. Uh, What greater miracle is there than to get somebody born again? We acknowledge the third thing, the Lord's death and resurrection. This should be on our heart and our mind all the time. We should be talking about his death and his resurrection. That's part and parcel of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The fourth thing is that we need to acknowledge that Jesus served us so that we are and should serve one another. And finally, we have to acknowledge the fact, get into alignment to the fact that we are the salt of the earth and that we're not going to lose our savor. We're going to remain salter. Our sacrifice, whatever sacrifice we make, will be salted with salt. Amen bringing ourselves into alignment of the Holy Spirit for him, what he's getting ready to do in these last days. We want to be under the spout where God's glory is being poured out. Father, we thank you for the ministry of the word of God today. Holy Spirit, make it real to our life and we'll give you thanks for it in Jesus name. Amen. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die today, that you would be prepared for heaven? If you're not sure, then I encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Father God, I come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. I repent and ask you to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I surrender my heart and life to you. By faith, I believe I receive you as my Lord and Savior, and I thank you for receiving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed this prayer and desire to know more about the gift of Christ that the Heavenly Father offers you, then email us at rbtc86 
at gmail.com. We will be glad to answer your questions promptly and provide you at your request with materials that will help you to grow in your faith in the Lord Jesus. This is Patsy Dunning. Thank you for listening to our broadcast today. And let me remind you to tune in to this station at the same time next week to hear more of the wonderful words of life. God bless you and remember what Jesus said. It is the Spirit who gives life.